Well, first of all, I feel tremendously fortunate to have the opportunity to have, um, you know, these great companies interested in what I'm interested in. And as a kid, I always had this soft spot in my heart for Carvin. And it was because um, I used to look at magazines, music instrument magazines, like they were porn. You know, it was like, yeah, look at that amplifier. You know, and then guitars were just beautiful to me. And Carvin had the best catalog. And I was, you know, 13, 12, 13. And uh, so it always had this mystique. And when I moved out to California and started working with Frank, he was actually working with Carvin. So I had an opportunity to actually hear their gear and get, they were nice enough to give me an X100B amp. And it was the first stack that I ever owned. And I remember I would just look at it and think, oh my God, you know, it was like a holy grail or something. So as I, you know, as you develop uh, as a musician, your ear changes and, you know, your, um, the way you approach the instrument changes and your needs change. Uh, so in the early days I was using very conventional type metal rock amplifiers, but there was always something about them that seemed abrasive, you know, and I wanted to do a lot of melody music where the guitar is just handed to you on a silver platter. And I was so lucky to be able to have uh, Carvin interested in working with me because they're a unique company in the sense that they're very, uh, it's almost like a cottage industry. You know, they're very, they're, they're family owned and it's very close uh, network. And the way that they make their equipment is it's not, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's produced, but a lot more care can go into the manufacturing because of the way that they sell. They can put more R&D and more value for the, for the dollar in an amplifier. So the things that I was looking for required some pretty forensic, uh, you know, amplifier tweaking that would just make the cost point for a custom amplifier add the ballpark for most companies. But with Carbon, we were able to actually fine tune and create an amplifier at a value that was, you know, realistic. So uh, I needed a, a uh, a friendly sound, but still had an edge to it. So we worked on, you know, this amp for like a year and a half. I liked the nice, warm, kind of a fuzzy top end that wasn't brittle. And we can fine tune it until it was that. And the bottom end, uh, I like it kind of like a compressed, almost loose bottom end, because it's very user friendly, you know? So we created this sound and there was only two um, channels, because the more channels you have in an amp, the more processing the sound goes through. And I just wanted to have simple processing to keep the integrity of the main sound. And I'm always looking for the cleanest, most direct signal path. Because, you know, amplifiers with all sorts of gain structures, they always deteriorate and eat away at the, the, the quality of the sound. And that's just, that's not an opinion, that's a fact, you know. So. With two, with two channels, it allowed the dirty and the clean. And, uh, you know, for the first uh, incarnation of the amp, that was what it was for me, and it was very, uh, uh, very appropriate at the time. Well, you know, human nature is to want to continue to expand, you know, and, and you know, we're usually, we, we could be satisfied with something for a very long time, and then even though we're satisfied with it, you know, we want to add a little something to it or change it up a bit. So, and, and when, you're, when you're a musician, you can work at something in your home. You could practice a piece of music till you're blue in the face. You could rehearse it with the band. You can buy a piece of gear and set it up and play it in rehearsals and you can have a guitar that feels a certain way and you can have all the stomp boxes in the world and and you can be very comfortable with them and, and you know uh, uh, cultivate a relationship with them in rehearsals and in your basement and in your room but once you get on that stage and the lights go out everything changes your perception of everything changes and when you're traveling and you're going from one gig to another to another to another, the sound changes because the ambience of the room changes. The floor you're putting your amplifiers on is different every night. So 
there's this constant, you know, reacquainting yourself. I mean, I've been doing it for 30 years, so, you know, I know what to expect. You know, my taste started to develop into something just a little different. I wanted something uh, maybe with a little more um, power in the, in the clean side. You know, because the clean, and uh, usually when you have an amp that's very clean or very dirty, there's that in-between sweet spot that's missing sometimes. Because it's usually, once you hit that dirty channel, you lose all of that beautiful clean uh, body. And once you turn the clean, clean channel up, it starts, it starts crashing and crackling and it doesn't give you a warm kind of a distortion. So it's sort of like the missing link. And that's what I wanted to incorporate into the amp, but I didn't want to add another channel because it, um, it compromises the integrity of the signal, you know what I mean? So whenever you, you know, I've discovered whenever you put something out there, the universe will provide, you know, and the laws of attraction will kick in and the right people will come into your life. And uh, I met Ben Fargan, who's this unbelievably brilliant master, you know, amplifier builder, designer. And we worked, you know, the Carvin team got with him and worked with him and we came up with this idea to actually create a booster for the first channel, for the clean channel, and make that a second channel so it's not necessarily another process that the amp has to, you know, the signal has to go through that deteriorates the sound. So now you've got this beautiful, you know, with the Legacy 2, this beautiful in-between kind of a uh, channel that just gives you that clean sound but with like hair. You know, and it, and it actually has a different breath to it, and it and it, and it, it has a, I wouldn't say a crunch, but it, um, it just has some hair. You know, it's more mature. It's got a little testosterone. So as a result, now you've got this beautiful missing link between these two channels, and uh, and there's been some other elements that were changed. You know, evolved. Some, uh, you know, I couldn't really give you the uh, technical specs on that. At one time, I knew it. You know, I, whenever I get into developing something, I, I know every single, you know, bit about it. You know, when it came time to do this, I got all these books on amplifiers, and I understood, I learned, and I read what, you know, how amplifiers work and what certain capacitors do and, you know, and uh, certain op amps or whatever. And then once I'm done, I forget that stuff as soon as I can. <laughs> I can't wait to forget it. I want it out of my head. I don't ever want to know it again. So, uh, <laughs> uh, as a result, um, I know that all of the elements of this amplifier are the best and the most appropriate for what I wanted at the time. And uh, I'm so pleased with it. You know, having every, whenever I think about, you know, you, 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 you charge your equipment with personality. You know, a guitar is just wire and wood, but you give it a personality by your passion and your love and the secrets you share with it you know and an amplifier is the same way and and whenever and I knew that when I was designing this amp and I developed a relationship with it and it's you know it's a very warm place for me you know when I think about this amplifier I just feel good and I get excited and I knew that the way an amplifier looks is like an album cover you know you you charge the music with the image of the cover and when you see the cover it gives you a whole overview and a whole flavor of what the album is. I mean, it's, it's relative until you put your perspective on it. So my perspective for this amp was to make it look like what it sounds in a sense. And that's why, you know, I, I chose this warm kind of like leather. You know, leather's got a very cool, tough, edgy kind of a um, feel, but it's also like a very warm, smooth thing instead of having a lot of metal, which really has psychologically a lot to do with the way it sounds to you and you know I just love this mesh and the word legacy just has a you know uh, it has a um, it has an, an intention and a weight to it and you know just the way it's laid out with these you know these older uh, knobs it's very simple amplifier really there's two channels and a, and a second channel which is a boost channel and there's just the you know the treble and the presence and the and the bass which is conventional there's none of these and, and, you know, some people like all that complex EQ stages. To me, it just destroys the, the quality of the sound. And then there's one thing about this amp that I was so excited to be able to incorporate that I do not see in any other amplifier 
is this mass, the way this master volume control works. Because what it does, it's actually after the preamp stage. So if you get a sound, like with your drive, you know, you have a certain amount of drive that you like, a certain amount of distortion, and a certain level, you create a sound that's either a really good rhythm sound or a good solo sound, whatever feels good under your fingers. And then what happens is if you're, if you're in an environment where you're too loud, you have to turn down and when you go to the master volume and you turn it down, it desaturates the signal because of where the volume control is in the signal path and you lose your sound. You know, this amplifier is not like that. If I've got the sound I want set up with the treble and the gain and the volume, and I have this set, I can put this volume so it's, you can, you can, you know, the way I'm talking right now, you hear me over the amp, but it has the sound. And then you can crank it all the way up and it, that sound only gets louder and louder and louder as opposed to getting more and more saturated. Now, obviously you can't, um, you can't replace the sound of what speakers sound like when you hit them harder and harder with a louder volume. But most of that saturation is, th is in the way that the signal path is set up with the gain structure of the amp. So this, as far as I know, is a unique design because it's a lifesaver for me because I can be in any situation and turn up and have my sound or turn way, way, way down and have my sound. Although I don't let people tell me to turn down. Very versatile uh, for um, you know all sorts of rock genres, you know, and blues. I believe because it's it's easy listening, you know. And with the three channels, you can really create just the right amount of you know grunge. But then again, you know, I I just recently gave one of these to a friend of mine who does uh, hardcore metal, hardcore metal, and you know who that is. And he's just over the moon. He's using it on all the stuff now. You know, so, um, yeah, I guess it's his verse. I haven't used it in that genre, really, you know. But, uh, you know, you, I believe that the, the parameters of this amp allow you to make it sound great in a lot of different uh, settings. Mm -hmm. 